I'd like to show you a method for making a gear inside of Illustrator, which once again seems a little odd, but we're going to probably make something like this eventually. So I want to show you the method for doing it. So what I'll do is I'll come over to my tools panel on the, on the left here and start with a star tool. And there's a billion ways we can create everything. I know you guys probably have your own method if you do, um, but I'm going to create a star to start with. Now when you guys draw with the star tool, what you can do is you can use your up and down arrow keys to increase or decrease the number of points on the stars, I guess you could say, our arms. Now if you drag while you're, in, you're holding down the button, the, the up arrow, down arrow, it's going to go pretty fast, so you got to be careful. Okay, so make about as many as we need. I'm going to hold down the shift key and straighten it out. Let go of the mouse button, let go of the shift key, and we got ourselves a star. Now, we're going to use this as the base for the gear. Next thing we've got to do is we've got to draw an ellipse. So I'm going to come over to my tools panel, and I'm going to open this bad boy up and tear it off by coming to the tear off tab there. Should be able to pull it off. Go to the ellipse tool and come out here, and you're going to notice I got my smart guides turned on. Now you want to use smart guides when you're drawing certain things, and this is one example of why I'd use them. Smart guides are located under View, Smart Guides. You can see them right there, and they're on by default in CS5. Okay, now I'm going to go into the center here. You can see it says Marked Center. I'm going to click and draw a circle. Now, to draw from the center in Illustrator, I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key on Mac and the Shift key. Keep it constrained. We'll make it just a little bit bigger than the star. There we go. Let go of the mouse. Let go of the keys there. And what we're going to do is we're going to combine these two. So I'm going to go to my selection tool here and select both. And we're going to go and use a Pathfinder operation. Now, this is something you can use in the Pathfinder panel. You can use it as an effect up in the effect panel or effect menu up there, rather. I'm just going to go to Window Pathfinder and open up the Pathfinder panel. And you guys, a lot of people are confused about the Pathfinder operations, these things in here, these buttons. I mean, there's five million of them, and it's hard to tell what's what, to be honest. I mean, you know, really, does that tell you merge right there? It doesn't mean. Anyway, you've got two different kinds. We've got shape modes, we've got pathfinders. Pathfinders are committed. And if you do one of these, that's it. The shape is done. It's going gonna, it's gonna to affect the underlying shape. So if you say merge them together, it will merge them, and that's it. There's no undoing except for undo. If you go to shape modes, these work the same way, you guys. This is the same since CS4. Earlier than CS4, when you clicked on a shape mode, it would not be committed, meaning you could, it wouldn't affect the underlying shapes. So right now, if I choose to, let's say, unite these two or click on the, you know, combine them, it will combine them. Okay, so that's it. That's committed. Now, we all actually will alt-click or option-click to create a compound shape, it's called. And this is the way it used to work in earlier versions of Illustrator before CS4. All right, we got that there. Now, one, of the, one other thing we got to do is we got to draw another circle. It's about the same size, same distance, everything, and just make it a little bit bigger. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, you should have copied that circle, probably, right? If I was smart, I would have. But there's ways around everything. If I come to the ellipse tool again, click on the ellipse tool, and I come out here and just click somewhere. It doesn't really matter. The great thing about a lot of these drawing tools is if you draw with one of the tools on the page or the artboard, and then you go out and click with the same tool, it's going to remember the same properties. So it's the same width and height. So if I click OK, the circle is the exact same size as what I just drew. Well, that's not super important, you guys. It really isn't. But I just wanted to show you that. All right, now I'm going to go to my selection tool, which is the letter V. I'll select these two here, and I want to actually uh, align them together. So I'm going to click on the gear shape to make that the um, the key object. So we align to the, the gear shape. I'll come to align up in the control panel up here. And I'll align them center on each other. And then I'm going to click on the circle again and make it a little bigger. Now, since they're aligned already, I just want to make it bigger from the center. So I'm going to use Option on Mac, Alt on Windows, and the Shift key. And I'll just kind of make it a bit bigger. Now, you got to decide what you want to do here, how big you want to make the gear teeth. So I'll make them, eh, that's good enough. Let go of the mouse, let go of the buttons. And what we're going to do is select both, and we're going to make the gear. Now, this is the best part, you guys. If you just want the gear with a color in it, that sort of thing, at this point, we're not going to commit to what we're about to do. Okay, so if you come over here, you guys are going to see what's called Intersect. What I'm going to do is hold down Alt on Windows or Option on Mac and click Intersect. And you'll notice the Expand button show up. Come on out here. You can see there's still two shapes there. Didn't affect the underlying shapes, but if I click to deselect, it looks like a gear. This is the best part about this. Now, what happened here is it created this compound shape, 
and I can still go back and edit these. So if I double click with the black arrow, I can get in here and I'm kind of in isolation mode, in group isolation mode here. I can just kind of resize or do whatever I want here. I didn't commit to it. If I double click outside, I'm back where I was. Now, just to finish this off, you guys, if we wanted to add some extra effects or different things to that, sometimes you have to expand. And by clicking expand over here or going up to the object menu, we can expand that thing and sort of commit to it, I guess you could say. Affect the shapes, make it a shape that looks like that. So when I'm done, I'll typically do that if I want to add effects or things like that. All right, now I'm going to undo that because I'm not done yet. I'm going to add just one more thing here to show you. Let me zoom in. What I'd like to do is kind of round the corners here, make it a little bit um, worn, I guess you could say. So we're going to go up to Effect, and you're going to see under Stylize here something called Round Corners. It's pretty cool. So I go to Round Corners. I'm going to select Preview, and what we can do is just change the radius. I'm using my arrow keys here to bump the radius. And if you go too far, it's going to mess it up. It's going to look really weird. So what I'm going to do is just go a little bit here, give it a little bit of a worn look. I'll click OK. Click to deselect, and I've got my gear. So there we go. A lot of ways, a lot of things you guys can do with this type of method, but just wanted to show you how to make a gear.